Hi, it's Chris here from Adventure Breaks and I wanted to show you how to use a sleeping bag correctly. The sleeping bag I'm going to show you today is what I use on my wild camping for beginners events. So it's a Berghouse sleeping bag, that's the brand, and the model is a Transition 200. When you get in your sleeping bag, a sleeping bag isn't heated, you're warm in the sleeping bag. And so if you're cold when you get into a sleeping bag, it's going to take a long time for you to get warm and for you to then heat your sleeping bag up. If you are a bit chilly before you go to bed, there's a few things you can do. One is make sure that you've had a hot meal. You can have a hot drink. The slight disadvantage of that is maybe you need the toilet in the night. The other real simple thing to do is literally just do a quick burst of exercise to warm your core body up before you get into your sleeping bag. Maybe it's going for a, a couple of minutes run. Maybe do some star jumps or some press ups. Just that burst of energy to warm your body up before you get into the sleeping bag. This is the head end and we have the zip but what most sleeping bags will also have is a zip at the bottom end so that's really useful sometimes you'll be too hot you can have that open and have a bit of ventilation that's a really useful feature the zip at the bottom. Another thing to mention around the zips is when you have the top one zipped up Usually there'll be this flap that comes across and can velcro on. That stops this zip from coming down unintentionally. Most sleeping bags will have this baffle around the shoulders with a drawstring. What that means is you can get tucked down inside the bag and then cinch that around your shoulders and that will trap all the heat in from your body within the bag. This one has got a hood that you can pull over your head and again it has a separate drawstring which allows you to cinch things in so you can look like Kenny from South Park. That will trap and retain a lot of the heat coming off your head. Make sure that your mouth and nose don't go within the sleeping bag. That's because if you're breathing and your breath is going into the bag, it's going to condense. If you're going to turn whilst the hood is up, grab hold of the bag from the inside and then turn with the sleeping bag, then the hood will go with you. The other thing I wanted to talk about is warmth rating. So on a sleeping bag, quite often you'll see comfort, limit and extreme measurement. You might think, oh, with this bag, you'll definitely be comfortable at five degrees Celsius. And perhaps the forecast when you go away is warmer than five degrees, um, but you may still be cold. These are scientifically rated. They warm a mannequin up, they then put on um, some clothing onto the mannequin including a hat and they then put it into the sleeping bag and they test certain conditions and see how quickly the mannequin cools down. It's also dependent on the sleeping mat so there's a whole variety of factors as well as personal comfort some people will want to sleep warmer or cooler than others and as I say it does assume that that mannequin or person has got a hat on. If you think you might be cold though, the real easy thing to do is to take a, uh, an extra layer of clothing that you can put on and of course a hat. You can heat whatever piece of clothing it is by having it inside the bag so then when you go to put it on it's already warm rather than putting on a cold bit of gear from outside of the sleeping bag. The other thing I like to do is to take a sleeping bag liner. I think these are fantastic. I've been using these for years. I always take them away with me. If you'd like one the same, we sell these on the website. You can get them in black or in white. If it's too hot to get into your sleeping bag, then you can just get into the liner and as it cools off, you can then get into your bag later. At the other extreme, if it is quite cool, um, then having the liner as well as the sleeping bag adds a little more insulation. The main advantage of sleeping bag liners is you don't have to wash the sleeping bag when you get home, you just wash the liner instead. They dry really quickly as well. I think these are fantastic and as I say, the links are below if you'd like to buy one. When you come to put the sleeping bag away, some people will try and roll it up or fold it up and you don't want to do that. Um, the reason is if you're, let's say you always fold it in half, it's going to create what they call weak spots down it. So places where there's less insulation and that'll let the heat, heat escape. Um, so instead, when you're packing it away, you want to just stuff it straight into the bag. It's nice and easy. That's the best way to treat the bag as well. There we go. So it's in the bag. I can have it like that if I was going to store it rolled up, um, I definitely wouldn't compress it. 
if you have the space then have the bag unrolled and keep the uh, compression sack with it but if I was going to pack this away into a rucksack now I'd compress it down again. There we go. So that is how to use a sleeping bag. What I'd highly recommend is to check out um, the Silk sleeping bag liners. They're fantastic products and well worth having. If you're new to camping, check out our Wild Camping for Beginners event. Adventure Breaks are all solo friendly adventures. They're really social. It's well worth having a look at the website.